machine is on the march again. Leicester Fun TV presents a variety of content, like fun discussions, match analysis, and engaging with Leicester fans worldwide. We want your views live. Thanks to our sponsors, Everot, Follow Blinds, Pocket Pies, Pink Car Leasing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Newbie and Co, and the Fox's Arms and Rainbows. We are live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Good morning, Tom from Leicester Fan TV here. Uh, just a quick and review of last night's game away at Tipswich and uh, what a ding-dong battle that was. Uh, a one-all draw, a point gained for me on the road, but uh, disappointment once again to concede such a late goal. We'll go through the game bit by bit, but for me, you know, overall, happy enough to come away for a point. But frustration is always that we didn't grind it out. So we've done it a few times this season in the last few games, conceding late goals. Ipswich away, uh, Ipswich last night was one. Sheffield Wednesday was another one, conceding a late goal. A couple, you know, a late goal to Millwall as well. We need to get out of that little bit of a habit because it seems to start to come in a habit, conceding goals or switching off at the end. Overall, I could say first half, yeah, I thought it was all Leicester. It generally was all Leicester in my view. Ipswich had a couple of chances, but for me. We've, we've got to do better with the chance we've created because before half time it could have been easy to 2 0, easily 2 0 before half time of the chance we've created in that first half. Uh, and Diddy in the box missing, miss, miss hitting a shot he should have been put burying for me there. No one around him, just siphoned into the bottom corner, done, dusted 1 0, but no, missed it. Uh, Fatui won at the back post, not on his toes, not ready for the chance when it clipped to him like we've seen before. If he gets that first touch right, he gets another clean shot and goal in me. We then get the goal, and it was a lovely, well-worked goal in my view, that that front five was causing Ipswich all sorts of havoc, and we were spreading the pitch wide. That was the biggest thing. Make that pitch as wide as possible and cause their back lines and the full-backs problems. We did, and the goal comes from that. It comes to ball, comes into Daka with a lovely turn. Sends an out Mavadidu, cuts inside onto that right and foot, right foot of his and bends it in the pass the goalkeeper. You might say the goalie should have done better with that. For me, it's a good finish and it's what Leicester had worked on. Spreading play wide, getting their full back to drag that position and we did it brilliantly. Obviously, it's controversial second half. We, we, we were sloppy in my view. I, I generally didn't think we moved the ball well enough. We weren't clinical enough when we had the ball at times. Again, we had a couple of... T- Half chances, you know, when we got in and around the penalty area. But we just wasn't clicking as well as we did in the first half. Obviously, then there's the two controversial decisions as well before we get to their goal. Uh, Jesper Hall goes running through on goal. And it's a blatant push and trip. It, 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 there's nothing more than it's that's a penalty to Leicester. With a chance of making it 2-0. And if the ball hits that for me, the game's over. Ipswich are dead and buried at that point. And then the second controversial is, is uh, Harmus has just been booked for a foul. Yellow card, clear as day. Two, three minutes later, frustration gets the better of him and he flies into Ricardo Pereira, knocks him over. That should have been a second yellow card and they should have been down to 10 men at that point. Leicester then <sighs> made substitutions. We had, I don't think Nacho did much when they come on. I don't think Eunice or Cassidy. I don't think any of them did anything in the game that really went, wow, they, they made a difference. We we would get him sent backwards. Soon as and Diddy and soon as KDH went off, we looked lost. Lost for ideas what to do with the ball. Look, lost trying to pass it forward at any time to Cassidy and Eunice. Uh, Ian Atcher wasn't linking the play up, you know, the whole point of view for me. I think at that point, you wanted someone to come on when you're taking Dakar off, is to hold the ball up because we were getting overrun. We needed to do something a bit different. And Nacho wasn't holding the ball up and he wasn't doing much for me. Uh, and then you come to the, the the cruel part of the game. We've seen it out. You've got to that 90 minute and the five minutes of injury time goes up. And you're just sitting there thinking, right, what do we need to do? Well, we need to be steady at the back. We need to be firm like we've done. We've given them shots. We've blocked them fantastically. Fatui made four, five, six great blocks in the game. 
him and Malavadidi, defensive side of the game, brilliant. But Fatui defensively was absolutely brilliant last night. But then you come to that point and you think you've got to keep a clear head, boys. Game management here. Game management. Nothing stupid. And the goal comes for me from a three, four mistakes. Not just we're not tackling the man as he's taking the shot. Like people keep saying, Cassidy should have gone through him and taken a car. That, that, that's not the start of it. The start of it comes is the Cody passed the ball to Fatui. And instead of looking up the line and going forward or passing it back to Cody, the simple ball, he tries a 60-yard crossfield ball across our 18-yard line. Faz then has to jump and head it forward. It then falls back to Ipswich who have the ball. It then goes out for a throw. But it all comes down to the fact we tried a 70-yard ball in like the 92nd minute. Why? There was no need to by Fatui there to try that ball. That ball should have been back to Cody and gone long into the channel and out of the way. We then put ourselves under pressure. And yeah, Cassidy, young lad, still a hit and miss. Starting to become a bit of a scape to go to me, sadly. Yeah, he's not really showing great glimpses of what, you know, excellent for us. But obviously, there's something there that Enzo trusts him to do and trusts him as a player to come on at the point. That's the inexperience, though, because he's that Winks, that's Jubilee Hall. He's taking yellow car for the team there. He's taking, more, uh, taking their captain out. He's going to clatter him. Not bothered. He didn't. He let him skip round him. He pulls his hand away. And then they get that stroke of look. And someone, I've seen a few people say, why did Vescar had it the other way? The ball flies off Ricardo. Within seconds, it's hit him in the head and gone in the net. There's nothing that neither Ricardo, Vestergaard or Madden goal can do about that goal. It is a freak goal. It's a freak, freak thing that's happened and it's ended up in the net. But it's probably more than Ipswich deserve. Second half, they were a lot better than we. I said it was a game of two hours in my head, and I still wake up this morning thinking it was. I think first half, we overrun them. We had a right go at them. We should have been out of sight in some ways and had a couple of goals. Uh, second half, for me, it was all lip switch, and we couldn't get a rhythm. We couldn't get our tempo. We couldn't get our passing game. We were sloppy with the ball. Look, I'm not going to moan at it. It happens, and I also think it's the game, the number of games in such a short period of time is catching up with the players, and that's probably why KDH went off. And Diddy was on a booking, so he had to make that one. Problem is now, like you say, we go into Cardiff at home and then on Friday, and then we play again 40, uh, you know, Monday against Huddersfield. The games are coming thick and fast. We then obviously get a nice four day break before we go to Millwall on the Saturday in the Cup. But at this Christmas period, I think, is taken out of the players with the way we play, the energy we have to use in a game, for, you know, moving that ball around, getting forward, getting back. I think the players looked a little bit tired going into the last 15 minutes of the match. And sadly for me, that's where you want your legs to come on. And the three lads who did come on, that Joe, Cassidy and Eunice, didn't offer enough for me in that uh, last quarter of the game, what you need them to be doing. But like I say, this someone said to me, <laughs> Boxing Day's come and gone. you play played 24 games. You're top of the league. You're six points clear of second place and 11 points clear of third, Southampton. I'd snap the hands off because at no point in the beginning of the season did I see us getting this far in front. You know, 59 points already. I've already said, that's brilliant. And we go again, we go into that last 22 games now with the same momentum. Because for me, if we can get 16, 17 wins out of that last 22 games, that's it, we're up. And that's all that matters now is getting those 16, 17 wins will be enough for me to get us back into the Premier League. Winning the league, brilliant. But getting up is most important. So we have to go to Cardiff. The three and a half thousand fans travelling there. Fair play to you boys. I'm there. I'll be there with you boys on the and girls on the Friday night. Looking forward to it. Let's get behind the team like we did yesterday at Ipswich. Massive game now. And then another massive game at home against Huddersfield. As always, drop your opinions in. I will come back to you. It's great to have a debate. That's what we're all about here on Leicester Fan TV. It's for the fans, by the fans. Your views matters. And I want to know what you think of yesterday. So drop your comments in. You might agree what I say. You might not agree what I say. Good to have your opinion. So for now, keep it all Leicester Fan TV. Enjoy your week off work. If you're off work, if you're back to work today, well, sorry. I'm off to the second now, so I'm enjoying my break. Have a great week and uh, I will drop another video in on Saturday morning after Cardiff. Cheers. Thanks for watching Leicester Fan TV. Thanks to our sponsors, Everards, Barlow Blinds, Pocket Pies, Pink Car Listing, Distillers Direct, Hologram, Take Me, Nubian Cow, The Fox's Arms and Rainbows. Run by the fans, for the fans.
Follow us on socials at Leicester Fan TV and visit LeicesterFanTV.com for all the latest news, views and videos.